healthcare in America and addressing the inequality gap. Medicare Advantage insurer ScanSee, Scan, Scan Health is launching a new plan focused on older LGBTQ adults. Our next guest says the goal of the program is to help these underserved community and address their specific needs. Joining me now, Scan Group and Health Plan CEO, Dr. Sachin Jain. Sachin, thank you so much for joining us today. Really an absolute pleasure to have you today and to talk about a lot of really important healthcare topics. You ready for this? A real honor, thrilled, thrilled to be here with you. <laughs> I wanna start off with obviously the news that we got uh, with your plan specifically focused on the LGBTQ community. A really uh, an interesting move and really need an explanation on why it's important to break out a plan just for this community. Well, Saturday was the start of uh, the annual enrollment process for Medicare Advantage beneficiaries. And um, what I would say is what we're seeing increasingly across the entire marketplace is plans that speak to specific populations who have historically been underserved or unserved. And the LGBTQ plus population is certainly one of those populations. Um, if you think about the era in which many LGBTQ plus older adults, senior citizens, grew up, they grew up in the shadows of society. They grew up having to hide their identity. And um, times are different in 2022. And we wanna make sure that part of what we're doing as an organization is being inclusive of all older adults. And that you know, specifically includes uh, making sure that we're meeting the healthcare needs, the distinctive healthcare needs of people who are um, part of the LGBTQ plus population. Um, I think having grown up uh, in the shadows, I think many people from this population uh, ultimately feel, uh, you know, have a greater burden of um, mental health needs, a greater burden of uh, needs in terms of navigating the provider networks um, and finding physicians who are sensitive to and can speak uh, to the specific, you know, healthcare needs of that population. And so we were thrilled to be able to partner with Included Health, um, which is an organization that's uh, uh, has built specific product offerings that are oriented towards this community to make sure that we're offering care that is culturally competent. And, and that speaks, we, we're seeing the progress there. We're seeing even the launch of telehealth and, and other startups that really cater to this community. Now tell me, how do you plan to do this at scale? Because scale has been the issue for every single company that has ever tried to really push some sort of uh, equity effort or try to really focus on different communities, how do you plan to do that? Well, I think it requires an organizational commitment. I think there's been a historic view that you know populations are monolithic. And I think one of the things that uh, the pandemic taught us was that um, the only way you could actually move the needle on health outcomes is when you start to think about specific communities and their specific needs. And so, um, you know, we at SCAN, uh, you know, are joining an increasing you know, number of companies in the healthcare industry that are actually starting to take a look at specific populations and go deep. Um, we're making the kinds of investments that, uh, you know, historically weren't made uh, to serve specific verticals and specific populations. I think, you know, one example that, you know, you and I have spoken about before uh, are the investments that we made in actually reducing disparities uh, in, in medication adherence in the African-American and Latinx populations. And I think you know what we've shown time and time again is that when you pick a particular population, identify the unmet needs, and actually build interventions to address those needs, uh, you can actually move healthcare outcomes in pretty significant ways. And so our efforts in the LGBTQ plus population are just the next example of that for us at Skin. So when we're talking about how you plan to go about doing that and, and scaling that up, um, you know, we've talked about, for example, the uh, shortfalls that the overall healthcare system has and misaligned incentives. And that's some of the reasons behind no other large scale company pursuing this. And for those who don't know, you've, you've, you've had the experience across the board in healthcare, in government, in insurance, and in other healthcare settings. So you really have seen behind the scenes. What would you say is the reason why we're not seeing more of these kinds of efforts? You know, honestly, I, I would say it's leadership, Anjali. Uh, you know, we've got uh, organizations that have historically um, not necessarily given these uh, given priority to these topics. You see a lot of talk, a lot of talk coming from across the healthcare industries, entities that are, um, you know, uh, saying that they believe in health equity, saying that they believe in disparities reductions. But when you actually look at the real investments that they're making, 
um, they're small and they're insignificant in the context of the broader challenges we face as a society. And so, um, you know, my view is that, you know, while there's a lot of rhetoric that's being devoted to serving, you know, underserved populations, the true investments that are being made are actually quite limited. And so I, I think when I think of solving these problems, I think what we have, what it, where it needs to start from is ultimately leadership and more organizations making real commitments as opposed to just the window dressing that um, we've ten, tended to see. I think the window dressing has created the impression that organizations are trying and because the, the metrics haven't necessarily moved, it's making us feel like you know, our efforts are failing. Mm -hmm. I would say the efforts have just not been significant enough, deep enough, or um, impactful enough uh, because you know they haven't necessarily been at the center of an organization strategy. A lot of what we're trying to prove at SCAN is that what when you actually set these priorities and make you know relevant investments, you can not only move you know clinical outcomes and reduce disparities, but you can also move business outcomes, and that's that's our goal. Um, we're not doing the embrace the the affirm product the. LGBTQ plus um, product, you know, purely for, you know, altruistic reasons, we actually think that there's a market that is underserved here and where we can actually grow share. And so um, I think that there's this interesting moment in time when there's an alignment of business interests, as well as doing the right thing from a social justice perspective. And to that point, I mean, uh, insurance has been largely the key factor that's been missing because there are a lot of cash options for those in the community. Now, talk to me about the blame game, because I know that's something you've also talked a lot about. And we know that right now, especially with what we saw with the Inflation Reduction Act, and just generally, largely speaking, a lot to do with how healthcare functions. Tell me about this blame game of clinical providers blaming insurers, blaming the drug companies, blaming PBMs. Everyone points a finger at being the reason why healthcare costs are so high. How do we fix that? I think it's it, what you said is exactly right, Anjali. I think it starts with actually taking a hard look at ourselves and looking at the ways in which we're making things more challenging for uh, you know for patients. Uh, you, you know, it is very easy to point at drug companies and say that they're gouging patients. It's easy to look at hospitals and saying they're engaging in predatory practices. It's easy to say that about physicians. It's easy to say that about insurance companies. But the reality is, is that I think all of us are culpable in creating the healthcare system that we have. And I've uh, to your, you know, to your point about my background, I've I've sat in all these seats across the healthcare industry, across all these verticals, and you know the common observation is that we're not necessarily doing enough from the seat that we're in and the moment in time that we're in it, um, and instead, you know, we spend a lot of effort trying to blame others for why things are dysfunctional or broken for patients. And I think you know there needs to be you know to my previous comments more leadership and more honest reflection about who we are, where we are and what we're doing wrong. Um, you know, you saw a number of New York Times exposés over the last couple of weeks about the health insurance industry, uh, about uh, the uh, health hospital community and some of the predatory practices related to you know, billing, related to coding. And, you know, we have to clean up our act. Um, none of us is uh, blame free in you know, this environment of ever increasing healthcare costs. You just had Al Burla on uh, talking about you know increasing the price of prices of vaccines as well as drugs, um, we have to take a hard look at what you know companies are doing, why they're doing it, and um, holding them accountable uh, both in the public forum and the media as well as um, you know in the pages of as well as you know through regulatory processes um, to ensure that patients are protected. Because what I see time and time again is. Uh, a lot of rhetoric that doesn't necessarily match the action of healthcare organizations. And what we need more than ever right now is authentic leadership that's committed to doing the right thing. Um, and I, I think what we see more often than not is organizations that you know should be more mission oriented, hiding behind the rhetoric of no margin, no mission, uh, which um, you know is a, is a nice statement to make. Um, it makes us feel better about some of the profit seeking, rent seeking behaviors that we observe in healthcare, um, but ultimately, ignores the fact that the mission isn't organizational sustainability. Um, the mission is serving the community and keeping people healthier. Um, and again, I think we've gotten confused over the last number of decades and healthcare has evolved into uh, you know, this new normal where every sector of healthcare is trying to extract as much as it can. And it's frankly unsustainable and it's unethical. 
Well, I wish we could dig in further to solve all the healthcare problems today, but we'll leave it there. Sachin Jain, Scan Group CEO, thank you again for joining us at today's Market Summit. Thank you so much, Anjali. Great to be with you.